Hello, this is Barry McLean. I'm presenting on pharmacyinformatics.net. And today I'm going over a productivity tool that helps with copying and pasting a very large subset of information from an Excel sheet to any other application. Could even be another Excel sheet, but usually the times I use this is it's some type of application where I'm just not able to copy and paste the full list of items and I have to do it manually over and over again. So if you find yourself in that situation now or you know on a frequent basis, this very much could be a tool that can help you out. Um, but without spending too much time about how to set it up and all that, I want to really show you what it does and the different options that I've put out there for you to explore. So the first thing I have on here is just a very generic Excel sheet of, of data. Um, you can see that it has three columns. This tool can be used for any number of columns and any number of rows. So it is flexible in that, in that way. This requires editing the script um, that, that is written. And it's not that hard to do. It sounds scary, but it's not. But we basically start with this Excel sheet. And then when we run this script, it will, it will do everything for us very quickly um, and seamlessly. And the way it looks, so I have three different versions of this script. And this is kind of what they, this is what they look like running them. But um, the first version we have is a single field. So I'll highlight that up here. So this is a copy and paste um, script, no tab or enter. It's creating a long list in one field. Usually it's some type of comma, or semicolon, delimited type list um, that, that we fill in here. And then the tool can, you, the application is searching amongst that list. So that's option one. The second script or version that I have run here is doing very similar what the first version is doing, but every single time uh, the copy, every cell is being copied and pasted, the, the script is pushing a, sending a tab key. And usually on the application end, it's usually one of these multi, um, multi response list that dynamically create another row. Every time you put in uh, a value or a parameter, so it just keeps on going until you're done. And then the last example I have here, I've actually never used this in, in the real world and I haven't had a real use case for it, but I created it just to kind of complete the different options that you can do with this. But this is a situation where not only are we copying and pasting the, the values in those that Excel worksheet, but it pushes tab every single time afterwards and then enter at the very end of the last column that's on each row. And then it's effectively filling a form out and entering it over and over again. And after it hits the enter key, it pushes tab again. So that way it can repopulate the cursor in that first field. So it's just going around and around and populating a form effectively. But it, all these scripts are extremely similar. Um, as much different, you know, the use cases look, they are, they're very much in line. So if those things look like what you're in the business for, then I will show you how to set it up and, and run these yourself. And quite frankly, they may not be perfect for you. You might have to even tweak the script a little bit for, for your use case. Um, there are sometimes some limitations with the applications usually with these, and there's some parameters within the script that we have to change. So we'll go into looking at that. So if you go on my website, pharmacyinformatics.net and look up the copy and paste automated tool, the first thing you need is auto hotkey. 
and I have where you can go download the program. It takes no less than 30 seconds to download. It is a very simple program. It only works for Windows products. So if you are an Apple user, this is one thing that it does not work on. But if you are a Windows user, you just load that, run it, install it, it takes 30 seconds. You will see it do effectively nothing, and that's perfect. The next thing that you have to do, depending on which version of this script, you could download them all or whichever one that you find is most appropriate. I've kind of laid out the, the different options here, and I have the links to the files. So these are auto hotkey uh, scripts. They're just text files that that have the script and they have a an extension of ahk and when you cl double click on them they they effectively are running so all you really have to do is click these links it'll download and i recommend as i have here just putting it on your desktop so i have all three scripts here and then i also have the excel sheet if you look here on line three, I actually have a link to a generic Excel sheet. You do not need to use that. It just will make it a little bit easier because I have it named exactly the way it's written in the script. So you can kind of use it as a template. And I have both the scripts and that Excel sheet on my desktop. It just needs to be in the same directory um, in order for it to run appropriately. Or you have to manipulate the, the script to find that Excel sheet. To me, it's just easier to have it all on the desktop. So if we look into one of these, uh, one of these scripts, all you have to do is right click and edit script and then it will open up the text file i have highlighted the areas on the website that i feel require the most attention the first item is the workbook workbook path so like i said if you're using my sample and have that naming convention, really just need the naming convention. As long as you have, have that, you can use this as is, otherwise just change the name here to whatever your, your workbook is in Excel. So that might be something you need to change. The next thing that is modifiable, depending on your data set, is how many columns are there. So I, just by default, have this set up to, it says N column two. This really represents zero through two. And that really represents three columns. So if you had one column only in your data, you would have that go from zero to zero. Computers, when we're looking at programming, they always start with number zero. So it can't have, not always how humans think, but if you have one column, it's zero to zero. If you have two, it would be zero to one. If it was three, you would have zero to two and so on and so forth. So that might be something that you need to change based on your data set. It does not matter. You do not have to tell it how many rows it has. It will, the script will figure that out. And then the other thing that may need to be modified in your script is also down here where wherever it says sleep. So it, it, this really is dependent on your application that you're running this in, but sometimes an application cannot handle the script running at a, a super fast velocity. So this is a way to uh, change the throttle for the for the script. Um, it is in microseconds. Uh, so that is a little bit different for folks. I have 
these scripts preset to what seems to work okay on my end. I've I've definitely have had to slow this down significantly. Um, and what can happen is you you might run this in your application and it's just not able to it's not capable of keeping up with it. And then the script is just running uh, <laughs> a havoc on your desktop. And if that does happen, I do have a an escape route. You literally just need to push the escape key and it will turn it off. So I do have that in the script as well, in case it goes AWOL. But if you make any changes to this, you just save it and it's pretty much ready to go. All you do to run it literally is just double click. It will run a read only instance. It'll pop up read only instance of your of your spreadsheet as I've defined here. You do not have to do anything with that. And then you effectively just run it. I'll just pull up a, a basic notepad and run it in this in it. The hot key for all of the scripts is the Windows button plus B. So I'm going to press that now. And now it's just running that script over and over and over again. And I'm going to go ahead and push escape, which is going to stop it from running. The other option is, is that you'll see a a little icon in your tray that has an H. You can always just right click and turn it off from that as well. You can exit out of the, the script that way as well, but pushing the escape key is definitely the easiest way. That is all that you need to do to run this and to modify it. You know, it might work in your use case. You might have to tweak the, the script that's in there. It's not hard to do. There is great documentation online for auto hotkey. There's many examples out there. So, you know, you run this and it's like the behavior isn't perfectly what you want. That might be an opportunity to learn a little bit more about, about this uh, program that's out there. I find it very useful. And that's all. Thank you for watching.